Hey guys, how's it going? And welcome back to another episode. In today's episode, we're back to talking about all kinds of things that you guys like to talk about. In fact, today we're gonna be talking a little bit about the banks. And we're gonna be talking about Mexico. We're gonna be talking about uh, all kinds of world news and, and stuff like that, all right? Um, you know, what you guys like to, to hear and what I like to talk about. So, first off, let's uh, just take a quick look over there. I'm gonna zoom in for one quick minute. And you can see the humongous line at the bank, all right? I think you guys can see it. Just like back home, just like you guys are probably dealing with in your neck of the woods, there's always a huge line at the bank. In fact, the reason I'm in this plaza today, the reason I'm here today in this area, is because I had to come to the bank as well. Not that bank, thank God. You know, my line only had like two people in front of it. Um, but basically everyone, you know, has a love-hate relationship with the banks. For the most part, it's a hate relationship with the banks. And, um, you know, being out here in this part of the world is absolutely no different. It's about the same. In fact, um, there's, a, there's a little bit of a different situation out here. The people really, really hate the banks in this part of the world. And um, the banks, you know, they're just trying to stay, take a stranglehold of, you know, this area. Just like they're trying to take a stranglehold of many areas around the world, okay? And again, this is no different. This is exactly the same living here. So. You know, what is today's episode all about? Well, last night, as I was just uh, doing my thing, you know, uh, looking at the news, watching YouTube videos, doing some reading, you know, all of that, yada, yada, yada. Um, I came across a story, a local story, in which AMLO, which is the Mexican president, okay? His name is AMLO, his, name is, his real name is Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. That's way too long, all right? So we're just gonna go with AMLO. That's what everybody calls him even here in Mexico. So we're, the story came out basically that AMLO, the president, you know, um, told the IMF, you know the IMF, I love the IMF. By saying I love the IMF, I'm really saying I fucking hate the IMF, right? I hate central banks. You guys already know that. I talk about it all the time. In fact, too much or not enough, depends on who's uh, listening. But the point I'm making is that the IMF basically came out to Mexico. You know, Christine Lagarde, I'm sure you guys know who I'm talking about here. You know, the international, who is the IMF? The IMF is the International Monetary Fund. All right, that is who they are. Sorry, I'm just trying to walk here without slipping and falling. This is wet all over the place. That's what she said. All right, but you know, so what happened? The the, uh, the the IMF came to you know the president of uh, of Mexico and basically said, "You have to do this, this, and that, or else." And uh, the Mexican president says, "I ain't got to do shit." You know, there's a new sheriff in town, and I'm not listening. That's basically what it was. So now you're probably you know you want a little more context. So what exactly was it that happened? Well. For the longest time, Mexico, even though it has a lot of riches and Mexico has a lot of, uh, you know, um, riches meaning it have a lot of oil, have a lot of uh, um, silver, has gold, it has um, lithium, it has so many wonderful products, you know, wonderful commodities that are worth a lot of money, and yet, you know, Mexico is doing pretty good, but they could be doing a lot better. You follow me? And the reason that they're not doing a lot better is simply because, you know, um, the banksters, just like everywhere else in the world, they have their, you know, they have taken their hold. They have taken, you know, they, they've uh, put their, their, their grubby, you know, hands all around this country, just like other countries. And so what's happening here in Mexico is basically the fact that the Mexican president is, is literally um, pushing away from the International, international Monetary Fund he does not want any business with the central banks. He does not want any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of, um, what you call it, relationship with these debt, um, debt creators, um, these slave owners, you know? So, you know, the Mexican president said, no way. Okay, but let me, okay, let's, let's start off. Okay, let's go with the context. Okay, so what happened was that the International Monetary Fund you know, the IMF, Christine Lagarde, which was a representative, came out here to Mexico and told the Mexican president, 
hey, we see that you're building an oil refinery. We don't want you to build that oil refinery. You gotta stop building that oil refinery. And Mexico, Mexico took that as a major insult. It's like, what do you mean don't build the oil refinery? Are you fucking serious right now? I mean, that's basically what the Mexican president said. And um, he also said, listen, there's a new sheriff in town and we're gonna build that refinery whether you like it or not. Now, what does a refinery have to do with anything, you know, that's going on right now? Well, Mexico, for, okay, so for, for people that um, are expats like me and you and a bunch of others or people that are looking to be expats, you know, one of the main things, one of the main problems out here is the fact that gasoline and power is so expensive. So, you know, out here, actually, you know, things, things like electricity, things like gasoline, all kinds of power, things like that, you know, they are, they are extremely, extremely expensive. By the way, look, there's like some poison ivy. You got everybody was walking around it. Don't touch it. <laughs> it's uh, that chaya stuff, the stuff we have in the backyard and we cook with. All right, sorry, I got a little distracted there. You want more context on that? Check out my other channel. Um, I'm trying to think. I think I gotta turn here. I think I, yeah, I think I gotta. You know what? Let me just keep walking this way. Whatever. You guys are enjoying the walk. It's no big deal. All right. So, yeah. At, at the end of the day, um, the, the 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 bank the the banking cabal, the central banks, you know, came out to Mexico and they told the, the country of Mexico, "Don't build an oil refinery. We we prohibit that." And so. The country is telling the central bank, what the fuck do you mean you prohibit that? We're the country that needs it. Who are you to tell us not to build it? By the way, so let me give you some context, some backstory on that. All right, so about the expensive oil, expensive electricity, expensive power in, the, in, uh, in Mexico. The reason that that exists, the reason that that is a reality is because even though Mexico... Okay, I didn't pass it. It's the next street up ahead. So even though Mexico is extremely um, oil rich, they cannot, you know what I mean? They cannot um, process their own oil. Hold on. You know, even though Mexico is very oil rich, they can't, you know, they can't um, process their own oil. Here, I'm just giving you the front so you guys can see what I got to deal with, with traffic here. Got to wait for that guy. All right, so. What, <laughs> what happens is, is that, you know, Mexico is very oil rich, but since Mexico has no, since Mexico has no oil refineries, what actually happens is that Mexico, by the way, have you noticed there's a lot more action, a lot more traffic, a lot more noise? Seems like we're getting back to normal, hell yeah. All right, so, you know, basically what happens is, is that, you know, Mexico, um, they cannot process their own oil. So they literally, this is, the, this is how it works in Mexico. Mexico has to dig the oil out of their own ground and then ship, okay, ship that oil. Okay, they gotta send that oil to the United States in which the United States then, they process the oil in their refineries and then once the oil is processed and turned into gasoline, turned into all of these other combustibles, then they return it back to Mexico. And so, and during that whole process, it's a lot of middlemen and a lot of unnecessary moving of, uh, of oil and, and product back and forth. So that's why the cost is so high. Because again, you know, let me give you another country that takes oil out of the ground, Venezuela. And uh, Venezuela and uh, same as Iraq, I mean, same as the Middle East out there, you know, when they take out their oil, they refine it themselves, and that's why they can literally give it away for free to their people. All right, what's going on in the US and the fracking and the oil, that's a completely different story. Another, you know, um, topic for another day. We're not talking about that, but we're talking about just the fact that Mexico, as a country, is doing everything humanly possible to become less globalist and more nationalistic. You know, they're trying to 
again, you know, take out the oil out of their own country, out of their own land, and give it back to the people, you know, at a cheaper price. Because again, if Mexico were have to have the ability to dig out their own oil and process their own oil and then give it to the people, then the gasoline would be extremely cheap in comparison. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna get to Middle East or Venezuela prices, but that's not the point. The point is, is that it can be done. And um, that's what they're, that's what they've been trying to do. One of the things that this president, one of the things that this president has been trying to do since day one is exactly that. You know, trying to make this uh, country stronger and more and less less dependent on the rest of the world, and have other countries depend on Mexico. And and again, you know what I mean? I, I see that as a really good thing. I don't see it as a bad thing. That dog sees it as a bad thing, though. That dog is not having it. You probably you probably couldn't see him, but whatever. The point is, the dog was not having it. <laughs> Anyways, but that's the situation. So, again, you know, the, the, the audacity, the balls on a central bank to come to a major country and tell that major country that they got to stop building a refinery or they got to they do anything, period, end of story, is, you know, that goes to show you the power, all right, and the balls on, on you know, institutions like the central banks and, and it goes to show you how little power and how little um, say a lot, of these a lot of these countries really had for a very long time. And when I keep saying and talking to you guys about the fact that things are changing and things are getting better and that most countries are finally breaking away and pushing away from things like the central banks and, um, and debt and uh, fake money and then all this other shit, you know what I mean? Like th these are the things that I'm telling you about because even though the US is not doing that at all. Si, si, después, se ve rico todo. 45. Como es? 45. 45, está bien rico. más tienen? ¿Qué más tienen aquí? De todo, eh? Qué bien. Y están abiertos todos los días, ¿verdad? Sí, 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 sí. Qué bien. Muchas gracias. Saludos, sí, saludos, saludos. Yeah, because I came back through here already making a video and I was, uh, you know, I was already distracted by the waff of the smell. That guy, the kid recognized me and he's there trying to make a sale. Um, I actually got food at home, so, you know, um, as much as a Christian would love me to show up with food, um, you know, the, only one, the, the dog is probably gonna eat it. But it's good to know that this place is only a couple blocks from the house, so I can just come anytime. Um, but anyways, back to what I was saying. So, yeah, notice it got quieter, you know, finally. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, but yeah, back to what I was saying. So, you know, the fact that like, you know, it, it goes to show you why, you, you know, a lot of people might not understand, you know, the whole Trump scenario, you know, as to why he's president or why he's going to become president again, why he's in power, why, you know, people like him around the world are in power. Because look, there might be a lot of people that hate him in the U.S., which again, there's a lot more people that love him than hate Trump in the U.S. But if you go around the world, most people love Trump too. And out here, the reason that they don't like him is only because he's, you know, kind of like talks shit about the people out here. But the reality is, is that when they, you know, got to choose between one or the other, they will still, they will still choose the guy that's treating them like shit, okay? Because at least, you know, Trump was just gonna say something, do something. Um, but at least um, he has the, you know, someone like Trump has the best interest of the U.S. In, in mind, and not, you know, trying to fucking screw everybody over, which is what the globalist plan is which is trying to screw everybody over and make everybody the same and make everybody one and equal and all that. So, you know, out here in a country that's actually growing and, um, oh, I gotta clean my glasses real quick. But out here in a country that's actually growing and actually um, looking to step out of the third world. And in fact, it's not third world. I would say second world, you know, on its way to first world, but that's just doing that it has other entities out there again like the international banks you know the central banks that are telling a country like this you know you can't get to first world you're only qualified to stay in the second world in fact you're going to be second world maybe third world again and and then you know like all of a sudden when people wonder why the president you know why they have a president in this country that is so similar to trump it's because of that and you're seeing so many presidents around the world with a very similar situation in which they're becoming very very um nationalistic it's all about populist you know populist movements um it's all about the sovereignty 
you know the sovereignty of uh individuals and their country and so on and so forth and that's what you're seeing a lot of we're seeing a lot of that okay on a regular basis now and uh you know right now that's what you're seeing with this country because when when the president of mexico as i was saying earlier in the video was saying we are not you know when when he was talking to the imf about you know when the imf said hey i need you to close a refinery in mexico and then president of mexico said no i'm not going to close a refinery and then on top of that he added this is not the old governments that used to be here this is a brand new government and we're not playing that shit so you know basically by him saying that and acting it out um it's definitely um, been changing things around so you know all of a sudden now you're seeing you know remember like i, I keep talking to you about here locally where here locally you know the governor of this state is using the emergency of the virus in order to say hey we need money we need money we need money give me money and so you know he is also saying listen for all the states out there that basically spent all of your emergency funds that basically stole the money that basically you know did all these horrible things and now you know you're using this emergency as an excuse to ask for a loan from the international monetary fund so that you can pocket that money and then give that debt to the people it's not going to happen anymore i'm not going to allow that no more so again that's what you see the president here has just as much hate from certain governors as trump has back home because it's a very similar situation you know in many many respects so you know i'm trying to figure out if i'm going the right way i think i'm going the right way um actually i'm i'm using the 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 what is it the timer on the camera as a gauge as to where i need to turn i think i still got to walk a little further before i turn not sure oh actually no i gotta go that way see i recognize whatever actually is that it that might not be it hold on a second that nah. one second i'll look at the i'll look at the map as i'm talking to you guys real quick I think it's the next street. Yeah, next street over. All right. Oh, um, okay. See. All right. But anyways, so you know that that's it's just a very interesting development that I saw there. You know what I mean? Basically, again, you know the 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 central banks and the banks bankers, they're not letting up. They're just tightening and tightening and tightening, and they're trying to take control of many countries. You know, um, as you know the cycle is ending in some countries like the US and Europe and others you know they're trying to continue this cycle elsewhere you know what I mean and uh, and so they're trying to continue it here but the Mexican president is not allowing it to take uh, hold and so look I'm on the fence about the Mexican president I talked about him just like I talk about everybody you know I give you the good the bad the ugly and I let the people to make the determinations but you know when I see something like this taking hold i'm like man you know that's a major win for the people that is a major you know major major plus a major you know good thing for the mexican people and remember that i was talking to you guys and telling you guys for a while now that um that mexico isn't the only country that there's also another country out there that is in a very very similar situation in a very very similar hold on i want to leave is in a very similar situation also in a very very similar um predicament you know when it comes to the finances the the state of the country um how the country is elevating from the ground up well it's india remember i keep talking to you guys about india too on, on a, a lot and especially when i'm comparing it to this country and guess what guess who's working very closely with mexico in order to help them build the refinery and help them get on their feet and become less dependent on the on the central banks and less dependent on uh, you know on you know on, on you know on, on these external forces again it's india you know india is out there so you know i've talked to you guys before many times about you know what's going on in india and what's going on with their you know um finances and their monetary situation where they've tried to go digital many times and they've you know mess with the people's money and you know so many things like that and uh i have not been a fan but it, it seems like things are turning around they look man this is what it seems like what's going what was going on 
before Trump got into power the first time, so like around 2016, okay? Around 2016, um, the world was going into straight new world order. It was going straight into, um, into globalism. If Hillary would have been elected, it would have been a continuation of Obama and a continuation of all that. And that was going on around the world. Remember, the U.S., like it or not, rules the world, okay? Whatever happens in the U.S., that's basically, you know what I mean? Um, a very similar situation is going to happen everywhere else. So, with that being said, as all that was developing, as all that was materializing, you know, a lot of people were losing a lot of faith in the world, where a lot of people were losing a lot of faith in a lot of the things that were going on, and so on and so forth. And uh, eventually, then this guy, Mr. Trumpinator, comes along, and people start regaining faith all of a sudden. They voted him in, and then, then again, he gets into office, and think of him what you will. He definitely put a kibosh to globalism and MWO for a little bit. Again, I'm still on the fence, but he is doing a lot of things in order to get away from that. And as he was doing that, as, um, as a side effect, as a side effect to him doing that, all of a sudden, all of these other, you know, countries around the world that were in a very similar predicament, um, and that were pretty much in a stranglehold by the, by the banks, by the banksters, and they had no way to escape or get out of it or, or anything, because again, if you went against the banks, they would send the U.S. Army after your country. So since most countries not only couldn't, they couldn't fight back, but they didn't have anything to fight back with, and they had no, you know, absolutely no, um, hey, what's the word I'm looking for? No, um, apoyo. I'm, I'm looking, I can't think of the word in, in English. But they didn't have any, um, oh my God, what's the word I'm looking for? They didn't have any help, help. All right, it's, um, um, they didn't have, they, you know, they didn't have any help incoming from anyone else. You know, they didn't have any other choice but to fall in line. But then all of a sudden, this guy named Trump becomes president. This guy Trump is pushing up, pushing against the banking cabal, pushing up against the NWO, central, um, central powers, pushing up, you know, pushing up against, you know, the, pushing up against the, the new world order and all that stuff. And again. You know, that's another conversation for another day. But then all of a sudden, all these countries around the world, you know, they basically, you know, had the courage and the power and the, um, the backing that all of a sudden they can also push back. That they can also push back against the uh, NWO. Let me see if you guys can see me there. All right. They, they can also push back against the NWO, push back against the you know, um, the central banks and push back against a lot of these things that are in power for a very long time. And so, you know, if, if several years ago, you know, President Modi over there in India was doing all the central banking things. You know, everything that the central bankers were telling them to do. Now, not so much. Now he's also spitting in the face of the central banks. And he's also, you know, um, look, they're about to go to war with China. We've talked about it many times in recent videos here. Um, and the same thing with Mexico now. Now, you know, I'm, I was on the fence with Mexico for a while, but then all of a sudden, like I see the Mexican president, you know, is um, kind of forming <clears throat> alliances with certain countries like the U.S. And like, for example, you know, oh man. I got a little chihuahua over there. But anyways, as I was saying, <laughs> um, as I was saying about uh, the president, um, you know, yeah, all of a sudden now, you know, they are, you know, and you know, the Mexican president is in solidarity with the, the United States president and they're cutting out the Canadian president because again, Canada is NWO, globalism, it's all that. And then, you know, Mexico is nationalism and um you know populism and same as the u.s right now nationalism populism so those two countries got together you know notice that all the nationalistic populist countries are getting together and forming something and um you, you get what i'm saying like i'm um, forming a an alliance in order to fight back against you know this whole thing and um and then you're seeing the other countries are forming an, another alliance you know the, the other countries that are following the following the same model that china is is uh you know kind of incorporating you know which is that totalitarian you know communist uh, regime 
And so, you know, the NWO, um, the New World Order, you know, um, the anti-Antifa, you know, all of these, you know, groups that want to make everything equal. Well, they want to make everything equal like China. They want it to be just like China, where everybody is the same. Everybody looks the same, does the same. Everything is just, you know, you can't tell the difference between two people. You know, everything is so the same. And then you see other countries, you know what I mean, like the U.S., and Mexico and others and India, you know, they're pushing for individuality. They're pushing for freedom. They're pushing for, um, you know, so many other things that are the opposite of that. Okay. And this is only one of the, you know, so I'm, I'm almost home, so I got to end this video. But, you know, to, I just wanted to bring up to light to show you guys, to, you know, that, you know, again, why I'm also in Mexico. There's a lot of reasons why I'm in Mexico. Again, I have a, a travel channel dedicated to talking about all the awesomeness that is Mexico. Um, but I don't cover that anymore on this channel. Remember, all, all I do is cover my opinion, politics. I cover all kinds of shit on this channel now. And so, you know, with that being said, you know, as I cover, since I'm covering this, you know, things are completely um, um, different on this channel. But, you know, one of the things that I, I, I am covering on this channel, you know, is the fact that, you know, we are, you know, this country of Mexico is one of the few countries out there that is actually not just pushing back, but they have a plan. They're executing that plan. They're moving forward on that plan. And they're not gonna let no banker or no other entity, you know, um, dictate um, anymore where this country is heading and where the people are, are, are you know what I mean? What, what's gonna be the, the end of the people type of thing. You know what I mean? Like what's gonna be the end result you know, for the people, you know, again, if Mexico is going to make any decisions for Mexico, it's going to be Mexico. It's not going to be a central bank. It's not going to be a foreign entity. It's not going to be anything like that. And that's uh, the same thing is going with the U.S., you know, because again, when you see what's going on in the U.S., it's like you see in other countries, it's like, you know, the president of the U.S. is like, we're not going to be, you know, the U.N. is not going to tell us what to do, you know, and shit like that. You feel me? So it's, it's a lot of that. And we're seeing the same thing here as well. All right. And so long story short i know i've been going on for about half an hour but again as i was saying you know basically how all this is turning out is the fact that you know being you know there's many countries that are fighting back and that you know you, you we need to look at everything from a completely different perspective because there's so many people out there that are very you know um how do i say this you know um fatalistic and a lot of the things that they, you know, that they, um, you know, talk about or think about when it comes to all this stuff. But the reality is, is that we have a very, very, very bright future ahead of us. And it's all just going to be depending on where you choose, you know, to be. You know what I mean? And what you choose to do with, uh, you know, with your resources and what you choose to do and with your time right now, you know, like knowledge. So, you know, for example, again, I know I'm going off in little circles here. Very tired. Brain is, you know, kind of burning out a little bit here. But, you know, the last thing I'm going to say is this, you know what I mean? choose wisely all right don't be just choosing because you know this is your you know your team is team a and you're going to be with team a no matter what no you need to choose wisely all right so in this case right now you need to make sure that you know what you're choosing you know are you going to allow you know some sort of uh entity you know control you that you have no control over or are you going to be the one that's in total control you get what i'm saying so it's the same thing with mexico mexico is not allowing um for some outside entity to take control and for the first time in a long time they have a president they got somebody in charge that is, has the best interest of the people in hand all right and again you know that goes to that goes also for many 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 countries out there us included and that's it and again i'm not here telling you who to vote for or who i'm voting for or anything like that i'm, I'm pretty sure you guys can all figure it out but again it comes to that too you know for anyone that's not voting for trump then what the hell are you voting for think about that you know and and, and, I, and I really really want to know what the hell you're voting for because if you're only going to say orange man bad you're proud of the problem man you know just like out here we have a lot of people that keep saying amlo bad you know orange you know whatever he's whatever color he is bad that's not a solution that's not you know so anyways guys i gotta go <laughs> i'm tired um i really hope you guys enjoyed today's video i'm gonna be making more and more and more and more and more of these and uh i'm trying to set up the green screen i'm trying to set a lot of things up uh a lot of work a lot of work all right and then this guy even though he's awesome he's also a lot of work a lot of work
Right, Gizmo? <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. You already know the deal. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell like on. But more importantly than anything else, if you enjoy this kind of content, please share. All right? Oh, wait. I said it all wrong. All right, guys. Thanks again. Peace out, brain. Bye.